introduction to big data preface content of this lecture in this lecture we will discuss a brief introduction to the big data why the big data where the big data comes from the challenges and the application of big data the characteristics of the big data that is in terms of volume velocity variety and many more these we are going to see in this part of the lecture what's what is a big data so big data is a term for a collection of data sets so large and complex that it becomes often difficult to process using traditional data processing applications now to see this particular picture here a consultant is saying that there are three quantillions byte of data are being created every day in an organization so it comes from everywhere it knows all and according to the book of wikipedia its name is the big data so this is a simple way of explaining a big data using this particular picture which represents only one aspect that is called volume or a size which is very big we will see more such challenges in terms of big data in this particular lecture so such a huge volume of particular data poses various challenges which includes how to capture such a big amount of data how do you cure it how do you store such big amount of data how can you search and how do you share this information and how to perform the transfer of this huge volume of data also we will see another further challenges like doing the analysis analytics and its visualization which is oftenly yeah, useful to for many applications where this big data is going to be used now the trend to this larger size of data sets is due to this additional information which are derived from the analysis of a single set of large related data as compared to the smaller sets with the same total size of the data this large size will allow the correlations to be found to various opportunities to exploit in terms of spot business trends to determine the quality of research to prevent the diseases to link the legal citations to combat the crimes and determine the real time roadway traffic conditions so given this particular a uh, big data or a large size of data and it will pose various opportunities and challenges and new kind of uh, applications and also social service and is possible that we are going to see uh, that is why the big data is going to become popular some of the facts and figures of this particular size of the data or a big data so we are going to see into it for example walmart is a company which handles 1 million customer transactions per hour so just see that here it deals with the volume or the rate in which these transactions or the customers are handled the second such company is which is called a facebook which handles 40 million 40 billion photos from its user base so when you say photos that means now here the data is in a different form and also of large size so two dimension of the complexity is being added now facebook here the uh, inserts 500 terabytes of new data every day so this basically becomes the volume challenge facebook stores accesses analyzes 30 plus petabytes of user generated data every day now similarly a flight generates 
terabytes of flight data in 6 to 8 hours of flight to make the customer a safe flight and also to basically ensure the, the comforts during the flight journey. So, that is why this particular flight generates and uses this information for the analysis and providing the solutions. Similarly, more than 5 billion people are calling, texting, tweeting, browsing on their mobile phones worldwide. So, here the people are involved in generating the big data. Another thing is about the decoding the human genome. So, originally it took 10 years to process it. Now, it can be achieved in one week. That means, the computations of a big data is now becoming possible to, to be uh, completed within the time. Now, another company which is called AT&T databases, which boosts the titles including the largest volumes of data in one database that is 312 terabytes and the second largest number of rows in a unique database that is 1.9 trillion, which comprises AT&T's extensive calling records. So, this particular company is this example which uses the large size databases that is the data which are at the store and then it performs, it has to perform the computations on this large size data set to gain the insight and basically drive the, the business of that company. Now, let us see the volume uh, with an insight that uh, one, if we consider that the a byte is a one grain of rice and a kilobyte that is 10 to power 3 is a one cup of rice, then megabyte which is 10 to power 6 becomes 8 bags of rice and we can see the gigabyte 10 to power 9 which is nothing but we can extend it and we can understand that 3 semi trucks of rice is 1 gigabyte. So, two container ships of rice will become 1 terabyte that is 10 to the power 12 and it represents the, the, the amount of information which flows on the internet. Petabytes which is 10 to power 15 is the blankets half of a city Jaipur. Exabyte which is 10 to power 18 that size is called a big data and here it comprises of or we can visualize the size as one fourth of this blanket which are there in the country. And zettabyte which is 10 to power 21 and this basically will fill the Pacific Ocean and that amount of data which is called zettabyte is a future uh, volume uh, of the big data. Similarly, keep on extending zettabyte becomes yottabyte that is 10 to power 24 which becomes an earth size uh, rice bowl and beyond that it is a brontobyte that is 10 to power 27 that becomes an astronomical size of that particular data. So, we are going and moving towards this kind of or huge volume of data which is of astronomical size. How to handle this kind of data is called a big data computation and we are going to see these particular intricacies in this part of the course. Now, what makes so much of data? Now, here we consider there are three different sources which makes or which contributes to this so much of data. The first one is called people. For example, you might have seen uh, the Facebook or a people carrying the mobile phone. All the time uh, they are generating the data either in the form of a text uh, in a Facebook or a GPS when uh, mobile is being carried or basically cameras taking pictures. So, these kind of data which is being generated by the people. Another type of data source which generates a huge volume of data is uh, using sensors. So, sensors are normally deployed in smart city organizations or in the industries or in many places. They keeps on generating the time series data. And the third type of data, third source is called organizations. So, organizations normally do the transactions, offer the services, transactions also and the customers transactions, all these will become the source of data out of this organization and this is all together will form a ubiquitous computing. So, the data on the internet uh, basically sometimes requires to basically do the analysis over the live statistics that we are going to see here in this part of the lecture. So, as I told you there are three different 
sources, one is the users, so users which are basically using uh, the services are Facebook, Twitter, Google. So, you see that they are generating lot of data and that basically is one of the source of big data. The second kind of data source which you see over here is that the devices are basically high devices with the sensor they are generating lot of data. For example, smart meters are generating data and RFID tags in the objects they are generating data and uh, this camera which is there and sensors which are there inside mobile phone they are generating data and also all the devices nowadays equipped with the devices which are called IoT devices and the sensors they are continuously generating the data and also 2 plus billion people on the web and uh, this particular size of the web also uh, are contributing enormous amount of data. So, there are all kind of sources which are now generating the data and this becomes a big size of data. Another example of a big data uh, at work is uh, using crowdsourcing. So, using crowdsourcing this particular data will be uh, taken up or captured and perform the computation on it to basically gain the insight of the, the traffic congestion on the roads or doing the, the sensing where uh, let us say an ambulance is moving and it requires a green path and also uh, it will perform or it will give a route on the map and the routes are computed using this particular uh, situation uh, which is dynamically changing at a particular time. So, where is the problem uh, in this uh, particular entire landscape of a big data? Now, we see that in traditional RDBMS, uh, these queries is not enough uh, sufficient to gain useful information out of the huge volume of data. That means, traditional RDBMS's uh, queries are insufficient to handle this kind of big data and uh, uh, to gain the insight. To search it with traditional tools to find out if a particular topic was trending would take so long that the result would be meaningless by the time. That means, it requires a real time uh, computation or retrieval of that particular data which is required at a particular point of time. And uh, the traditional RDBMS operations that is the retrieval are slow and it is not useful for many of the applications. So, we will see in this particular part of the course uh, the remedy or the solutions which uh, big data has uh, regarding storing this information and providing the retrieval at a much faster speed and also newer methods which can perform the analysis on this kind of big data at lightning speed. So, the challenges are uh, summarized over here uh, which are basically again uh, about using the big data for different applications is about capturing, storing, searching, sharing, analyzing and visualizing. So, IBM and Gartner together they consider the big data as three different V's. So, the characteristics of a big data is given as these different V's. So, here Gartner explained or a IBM also considered three most important V's. So, first three V's which characterize the big data are volume, velocity, variety. What are these and how it is going to signify uh, this particular data as the big data? So, the characteristics of uh, uh, these particular uh, features that is the volume, velocity and variety uh, will characterize the data as the big data and uh, we will see here uh, that uh, when we say that it is the, the volume that is the size that is beyond petabytes which we, will, which we have already seen if that size is there then basically it enters into the big data domain. And, and uh, uh, similarly uh, if let us say uh, the variety uh, means the data is not only the text data, but it is in the form of the images, videos, 3D objects and so on. 
then basically there is a huge not only the size but also the data variety adds another dimension of the complexity. So, uh, and the another dimension which is called basically the velocity that is the rate at which these data which is being generated has to be tapped and processed. So, this becomes the speed or the velocity. So, the three V's together they basically will characterize the data as the big data. So, big data will be uh, in the form of transactions, in the form of interactions or in the form of observations or together is generating the large size of data that is data sets which need to be analyzed. So, here we see that uh, uh, let us say that big data uh, scenario uh, using this big data they are doing sentiment analysis to understand more uh, insight about the entire centric uh, customer centric businesses that is the sentiments. When it comes there are sentiments two types of sentiment individual sentiments that means if the business is targeted to basically in, uh, for a particular individual or basically the entire customer base is not individual, but it is the entire population and the businesses are trying to understand the sentiments and plan the new businesses which are basically possible. So, uh, and similarly uh, sensors RFD, RFID and different devices they also generate lot of uh, different data. Similarly, user click streams also generate lot of data. These particular data will form the mobile web and uh, will be uh, analyzed uh, in the real time and uh, to, to gain various insight for example, to understand the traffic congestion situation in, in, a, in a smart city or, or to basically uh, deal with the disasters. For example, if there is a fire at one place or is being triggered triggering the fire, so it has to be controlled that is called disasters. So, all these uh, uh, that means, the big data the more insight has to be gained and it is better serving the community or basically the masses. So, that is why the big data is here uh, and it is uh, becoming popular day by day. Now, let us see in more detail of these uh, characteristics. So, the first characteristics of a big data is called volume and this is nothing but uh, called a scale. So, uh, the enterprises uh, are basically ever growing uh, and generating the data of all types and the size typically goes beyond terabytes then it will be categorized as a huge volume and that basically is uh, require a different technology which is called big data and for the computation. For example, if there are 12 terabytes of tweets which are created every day and which need to be analyzed to for the sentiment analysis. So, this sometimes uh, is a big data problem. Similarly, uh, 350 billion annual meter readings in a smart meter uh, to uh, for the analysis to predict the uh, power consumption again becomes a big data problem where the volume is involved to be uh, 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 to, to be to be solved using big data problem and applications. So here uh, we see that 44 times increase uh, in the volume of that particular big data uh, is increasing from 2009 to 2020 and also that is from 4.8 zettabyte to 35 zettabytes. So, data volume is increasing exponentially and uh, uh, it requires uh, a big data uh, platform to be uh, used in this particular computations. Another example of uh, generating the huge volume of data is the CERN's large hydron collider which generates 15 petabytes of data up year. Another source of generating big data is the earth scope and uh, here 67 terabytes of uh, data is being generated and is being analyzed. Now, the next characteristics uh, uh, in this sequence is called velocity that is called is speed sometimes 2 minutes is too late. So, basically that shows that reflects that uh, here the time is a factor and everything has to be done within a particular time bound 
and this particular aspect of computation is called the velocity. That means, the data which is generated in real time it has to be uh, analyzed and understood uh, about various uh, purposes. For example, if you want to catch a fraud for an online transaction, then the entire transaction has to be analyzed and being detected whether it is a fraudulent transaction or it is a normal transaction at that speed. So, big data must be uh, using uh, the stream data in this particular scenario. So, velocity is the stream of that particular data which is basically flowing out of the, the, the applications which need to be analyzed and uh, being used in application. Similarly, we have to scrutinize 5 million trade events which are created every day to identify the potential fraud. Similarly, to analyze 500 million daily call details in a real time to protect the customer churn at a faster or not. So, these kind of applications are now driving the different uh, companies or the organizations and uh, to retain the customer and also to run the businesses uh, in future. So, obviously, this aspect of a big data is also very much needed and uh, volume and velocity together uh, is creating the challenges uh, in this big data uh, computation. So, this we have already uh, understood that data in big data in the velocity uh, means that data is generated at a very fast pace and which need to be uh, processed at that speed. Now, another uh, use of uh, this velocity is about online data analytics and here uh, if you miss or if you do this analysis late that means you will be missing the opportunity because uh, these operations are doing in a, in a real time and real time means some deadlines are there after that, that decision is of no use. So, late decisions will imply the missing opportunities and this means that the velocity is in effect uh, at for that application. So, the examples of such uh, uh, cases are like e-promotions and healthcare monitoring where the sensors are monitoring your activities and the body and being alerting you for any abnormal measurements uh, which requires an immediate attention or a reaction. So, this will give the real time or basically the fast data and uh, nowadays uh, the social media and the networks are contributing in this particular uh, dimension and uh, has to be uh, not only captured, but need to be computed uh, in real time all this data. Similarly, for the scientific in instruments, mobile devices, sensor technology and networks. So, uh, this will also be uh, very much requiring this kind of dimension that is the uh, real time analysis or the decision making. So, in most of the businesses where customer centric decisions are to be taken, um, that means to give the product recommendations and to learn why the customers are uh, basically uh, making or churn out of that business or how the friend invitations are being sent to join uh, together, uh, which will basically uh, be in the form of uh, gaining. Uh, more businesses, uh, similarly how to prevent the fraud uh, and how to improve the marketing. It is all customer centric to understand the behavior or sentiment of a customer and do the real time analytics and this will be a, a very good um, uh, way of uh, running the business and the every business has to basically be a customer centric to drive it further. So, real time analytics is very much required and the decisions are being used. Next dimension is called the variety and which adds to another level of um, uh, uh, com which is called complexity. So, variety means the data big data uh, is not of one form, but of several type of uh, forms of big data uh, comprises of for example, the structured data when it calls when it basically is perceived is a uh, the data which is stored in the form of a tables. Unstructured data which cannot be stored uh, completely in the, the tabular form 
uh, which is called unstructured data, uh, which is basically the text sensor data, audio and video. There are different type of data which cannot be um, uh, termed as the structured data. That is lot of variety is there in the data becomes unstructured. Semi structured is for example, XML. So, web data uh, which is captured in the form of XML forms a semi structured data. All these different variety structured, unstructured and semi structured data will basically deals with a complexity uh, to the big data which is called the variety. Examples of this uh, variety uh, dimension into the big data is uh, the data which is coming out of uh, the real time uh, data out of uh, the transactions, tables and legacy data, then the text data which is on the web and semi structured data that is the XML data which is being captured out of the web, uh, graph data which is nothing but a social network data, semantic web, streaming data you can scan the data once and the public, uh, big public data which is available. Uh, as online or a weather data or a finance data and so on. Together, these different variety of data will add to different complexity uh, in big data computation, but very much needed uh, for decision making into an organization. To extract the knowledge out of these variety of data means that all these type of data need to be uh, linked together or correlated together and gain the meaningful insight. Uh, out of uh, uh, these correlated uh, events or activities. So, therefore, we can summarize here the volume that is the data at rest that means, the terabytes or to the exabytes of the existing data need to be processed and this becomes the one V that is three uh, Vs of a big data one of the uh, three Vs of a big data. The second one is called the volume or the velocity. Velocity means the data which is there in the motion and this particular data is called a streaming data and this basically varies from milliseconds to the to the second uh, to respond and uh, this uh, rate if it is uh, the, the constraint then it becomes the velocity that data is called fast data. Third type of data which is called uh, third type of characteristics which is called the variety that means data is in many forms that is structured, unstructured and semi structured uh, that is the data is in the form of text multimedia and so on this becomes the variety of data. The fourth one uh, that means out of three one more if we take this is called veracity. So, veracity means the data which is in doubt that means the data which contains the uncertainties and uh, this adds to inconsistency, incompleteness, latency, deception and uh, this has to be uh, uh, curated before is going to be used in the data. So, this veracity is basically that kind of uh, errors, uh, noise and uncertainties which are present in the data need to be handled. And there are many more V's and such as uh, validity and uh, means, uh, so, so the time uh, of that particular data will indicate the validity, variability and viscosity, volatility, viability, venue, vocabulary, vagueness, all these are, all these will add more V's. So, it is not three V's in big data, but plus n more V's are there. Uh, now, let us summarize the most important V's and uh, uh, which we will be discussing in this part of the course uh, are as follows. So, uh, that means, the big data uh, first important uh, uh, characteristic of a big data is the volume which will add uh, the, the complexity in the terms of uh, dimension in the terms of size. The second one is uh, called variety which will add. So, uh, the first uh, one uh, which is going to add the dimension in the big data is called uh, the volume is going to add this dimension which is called a size uh, uh, in a big data. The second dimension is called the complexity, this is also a dimension in the big data.
in the terms of variety. So, variety will keep on adding the complexity and so variety is another dimension. So, this complexity is coming out of due to the different variety of data. Third dimension is uh, given in the terms of the speed if it is required and this is called the velocity. So, velocity that is in the terms of speed will add another dimension uh, and this particular dimension will add more complexity uh, in a big data computation. Finally, the valence, valence means it is the term which is uh, taken out from the chemistry means the more connected uh, the data is uh, higher valence it is. So, connectivity will going to add one more dimension to the big data. So, why this uh, connectedness is important because if you design the machine learning algorithm and if the data is less connected then machine learning algorithm will work fine, but if the data is more connected then those machine learning algorithm has to be uh, taken into a new way or revisit and a new machine learning algorithm may sometimes require. So, it basically uh, depends upon these different uh, characteristics of a big data and uh, how the analysis is to be done uh, that is the techniques uh, need to be uh, uh, means uh, revised again uh, uh, that is why these complexities are so important in the processing uh, of this big data. Finally, another uh, veracity as I told you that lot of noise is there. So, with a lo lot of noise and uh, incompleteness inconsistencies remains into the data and this particular data uh, if it is analyzed obviously, the quality of the decisions will go down. So, this is the dimension which needs uh, that the data has to be cured and a, a quality data is required. So, that the decisions also will be uh, more accurate for accurate decision making. So, this uh, these are basically uh, uh, characteristics will add different dimension of complexity in computation or, anal or analyzing the data. So, hence the big data analytics has to deal with these complexities and we are going to see all these aspects in this part of the course. And finally, uh, these uh, at the heart uh, of all these dimensions you see that uh, this is at the heart. meaning to say that finally, using this particular different characteristics and their dimensions finally, you have to gain some value for um, extract some value out of that particular big data and which is going to be useful for an application. So, this value uh, it has to give a value otherwise why this data big data is uh, becoming so important that we are going to see. So, value is going to be made finally and uh, this will be used in various applications. So, value uh, is derived out of integrating dif these different dimensional or characteristics of that particular data. For example, sometimes you can reduce the data complexity, increase the data availability, unify your data streams and all these above will lead to the increased data collaboration and also will add the value to your big data. So, value uh, adding the value uh, or extracting the value out of the big data for uh, different application is going to be uh, at the heart or at the center. Now, uh, we will we have briefly discussed let us see more detail about uh, the characteristic which is called the veracity. So, veracity refers to the biases or the noise or the abnormalities which resides into the data and basically sometimes the doubt on the trustworthiness of the data. So, for example, one in three business leaders do not trust the information that they use to make the decision. And for example, if let us say uh, age is asked by a particular person and if that particular person is giving a wrong age uh, and uh, so basically uh, this uh, goes in the terms of noise or sometimes people do not specify their age and sometimes if the age is going to be uh, important in making decisions uh, in a particular business then, then basically uh, this particular aspect is going to be touched upon as veracity. So, how can you 
act upon the information if you do not trust on it. For example, if somebody gives a wrong age information and if you are acting on it then the decisions are not going to be accurate. So, veracity is going to be an important factor and uh, it will uh, affect the decisions and uh, so therefore, the quality of data uh, veracity uh, will ensure that way. So, establishing the trust in a big data presents a huge challenge as the variety and the number of uh, resources uh, grows. Another characteristic is called valence of often refers to the connectedness of the big data. Such as uh, in we see that the, the, the graphs of uh, forms of a graph of the network that means if the graph is dense is sparse. So, there are different analysis uh, in, the, in the algorithm uh, which are to be applied in uh, these different dynamic situations. Uh, varies and the valence uh, is uh, going to be useful uh, in uh, that aspect. The next V uh, is called validity that is the accuracy and correctness of the data uh, relative uh, to a particular use. So, it depends upon a particular use case these validity that is accuracy and correctness of the data is going to be uh, useful. For example, in a satellite imaginary uh, for predicting the quality versus social media post uh, where the human impact is uh, going to be an uh, important part. We will see uh, more such uh, use cases or examples of these uh, characteristics of a big data. Another uh, characteristic is called variability that is how the meaning of a data changes over the time and uh, furthermore the characteristics are viscosity and volatility both uh, related to the velocity, viscosity is the data velocity relative to the time scale of event being studied and volatility means the rate of data loss and stable lifetime of the data. There are more V's uh, uh, and uh, for example, vocabulary means uh, metadata describing the structure and vagueness is the confusion about what big data uh, means at that particular application for that application. So, uh, now coming how are we going to address uh, these characteristics and the complexities around uh, these uh, different uh, characteristics which are there in the big data. So, if, if the volume is big then uh, we uh, require uh, to uh, uh, develop the method which can be computed in parallel the data and also perform uh, the, the uh, uh, distill this particular big data to gain the summary of that information and uh, how this particular data is to be handled that is what will be the format standard and structure and this all will be uh, taught in the uh, terms of dealing with this volume. Similarly, if we see uh, about the harnessing of a big data uh, one way uh, means uh, earlier the traditional approach was uh, using the operational databases every company was having the databases where the name of a customer and uh, all the details were stored. So, that is how the relational database becomes very powerful in the uh, means uh, the and has developed lot of classical techniques to handle and that is called OLTP. The next uh, stage is uh, again has been passed out which is called uh, OLAP and uh, this deals with the data warehouses that means out of different databases it pulls the relevant information and forms the data warehouse for making the decisions. Finally, nowadays uh, it is uh, 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 RTAP and uh, here the data which is in the form of a stream that is data is in motion and it has to be uh, uh, called stream computation has to be applied on it to extract the meaningful insight and this RTAP is called real time analytic processing to improve the business response and this is the latest trend and in the big data we will see about the stream computation. So, OLTP means online transaction processing which is related to the DBMS and uh, OLAP stands for online analytical processing which deals with uh, the data warehousing 
uh, and R TAP which is called real time analytics processing which handles the big data architecture and the technology. So, we see that uh, the model of this computation is quite changing that means, the earlier uh, model if you see uh, was uh, uh, based on the RDBMS, OLTP and OLAP. Uh, uh, this uh, was the old model and new model is based on the real time data that means, all of us are generating the data and all of us are consuming the data. It is not only the companies which are generating the data and uh, they are consuming it. So, the new model uh, uh, is required and uh, to be integrated into the different business uh, decision making and the solutions and therefore, if you see this particular uh, picture which will uh, which is what is the driving the big data uh, uh, further development and uh, its research and its use case is uh, shown here in this particular picture that means, earlier it was uh, business intelligence where the value was moderate and the complexity also was moderate, but nowadays uh, it comes uh, predictive analytics and uh, data mining. Here the optimizations and predictive analytics are not easy and requires a computation of the big data and, uh, uh, and also has to be done in the real time. So, all the complexities are now there and the analytics becomes now called predictive analytics. Uh, and earlier analytics in the business analytics, uh, business analytics uh, intelligence uses the, the prescriptive and descriptive analytics, but nowadays predictive analytics is very much of use which uh, needs a real time or a stream computation processing of the large data sets. So, big data analytics uh, uh, is uh, driving uh, this uh, different uh, uh, businesses and requires uh, uh, the insights out of the big data computations that we are going to cover up in this part of the course. So, as far as uh, if you see the big data which is moving, uh, so big data uh, is first we see that it is the fast data and ETL and all these uh, things which we have already seen and uh, then comes the big analytics, big data analytics which are different tools which are available which is based on the big data technology and nowadays to gain more deeper insight different machine learning and predictive analytics are applied on the big data that we are going to see. So, these kind of uh, uh, I mean now, now those uh, techniques uh, for analysis analytics uh, requires uh, to compute in terms of terabytes, petabytes, exabytes and zettabytes that is the huge size of volume. So, conclusion in this lecture, we have defined big data and discussed the challenges and various applications of big data. We have also described in more detail about the characteristics of big, big data and the three most important characteristics of a big data that is three V's we have covered in quite detail that is the volume, velocity and variety. Furthermore, we have also seen other V's uh, which are evolving around the big data as the, the, the time progresses and uh, mature this uh, particular big data area furthermore. So, big data analytics we have also seen a little bit about that and also uh, about the big data landscape and various uh, terminologies and technologies we have already just touched upon. Thank you.